When it comes to vintage styles, drawn lettering can really give us our own unique look and probably is the most characteristic of the early 1900s. Drawn lettering really came into play in the mid-1800s with the advent of lithography. For the first time, artists could have control over their artwork and how it related with the lettering. Previously, when someone wanted a poster, they went to a printer. The printer would take out whatever type styles he had in whatever font or letter size that he had and create a poster that was packed with as much information as possible. This created a bunch of information, but not a lot of attractiveness. Lithography changed all that. Jules Charest, one of the first poster artists, almost single-handedly changed the face of Paris overnight with his colorful posters. Alphonse Mucha became famous, creating his own lettering style to go with his illustrations. So drawn lettering began to evolve from the mid-1800s all the way up into the early 1900s. Artists of this time used whatever materials they could get their hands on. Some of them had pointed nibs or blunt pointed nibs with a sort of ball shape at the end, or they would use brushes, or they would draw their letters and fill them in with ink or paint. We have many examples of drawn lettering when the speedball textbook comes out. So when the speedball pen was invented, Gordon and George were advertising how much easier it was to do drawn lettering with their pens. So we'll be exploring both previous tools and the speedball pen, but mostly what we'll be concentrating on is the distinct style of vintage lettering that comes from drawing the letters.